why we welcome you to the inner circle the inner circle or inner ring is the most exclusive club in history it has consisted of those religious political and literary leaders having knowledge of the great secret that the calpurnius piso family of ancient rome created the fictional jesus the new testament the church and christianity in welcoming the general public to this knowledge the following introduction is appropriate originally this explanation was designed solely for Jews for the purpose of preventing their conversion to Christianity. It was not intended for Christians nor other non-Jews. No exclusivism was intended, rather, concern for the faith of others. The purpose of this booklet was to inform Jewish Christians and Jewish Jews of the true account of the creation of Christianity. In the first century AD, Jews were 10% of the population of the Roman Empire. Today, after 1900 years of suffering persecution, forced conversion, exiling, murder, and finally the Holocaust, the Jews are but slash 4 of 1% of the world's population. And today Jews are being attacked by modern versions of the age-old problems. Firstly, there are a number of groups of what are called Messianic Jews or Hebrew Christians or completed Jews, whose leaders are engaged in the twofold business of, one, collecting money from Christians, their churches, and their Christian organizations, and, two, using the money thus collected to evangelize the more confused and slash or unsophisticated of their Jewish brethren into changing their religious affiliation to become Christians. Secondly, still today other Christian groups continue to manipulate their readers and listeners by preaching hatred toward Jews. Some attack Jews by attacking the state of Israel. They claim the Holocaust was a lie created by Jews to justify Israel. They continuously present the account of the 1967 wartime attack on the USS Liberty, with their cry of Jewish conspiracy. Other groups claim that they, white Christian Americans, are somehow descended from the northern ten tribes who were carried off by Assyria in 720 before Christ, and that they, and not Jews, are modern-day Israel and that Jews are satanic rejectors of Christ and have no right to exist. All this is done in the name of Christ, while the money continues pouring in. This hatred toward Jews seems reasonable to many zero and slash why because 1900 years of stereotyping Jews has conditioned popular thinking to its acceptance. The hatred was deliberately created by the authors of the New Testament, as this booklet shows. Thirdly, our Arab cousins have seized upon the worldwide negative image of the Jews to likewise manipulate for power. They and their communist friends dominate the UN so that it spends 50% of its total time attacking Israel by every conceivable excuse. Many Christians, as well as Jews, have wondered at this continued manipulation of hatred. Christians have also wondered at just why the Jews did reject Jesus. They have doubted the Jesus story but there were no answers available for their questions. Many have been clearly pleased to obtain and read this explanation. Therefore, it is to seekers of truth of all possible persuasions that we respectfully submit the information in this booklet. Praise Piso! A challenging proposal if any group or person should feel its sincerity and slash or honesty is being unfairly attacked by this booklet or should wish to challenge this thesis, we stand ready to publicly debate on the issues a. The actual authorship of the New Testament, and, b. The proof that leaders know this great secret and use the information, which is code, in their writings. How to obtain additional copies Send $6 per copy requested to the sole distributor. The Abelard Roikland Foundation, P.O. Box 5652 Kent Washington, 98064. Roikland, Abelard. The True Authorship of the New Testament. Bibliography, 1 Rome, Roman Empire, Roman History, Jewish History, Church History, Christianity, Religion, Calpurnius Piso, Flavius Josephus. ISBN 0-930808-02-9 The Great Secret for There is Nothing Covered That Will Not Be Revealed, Matt 10.26, The New Testament, The Church, and Christianity were all the creation of the Calpurnius Piso, pronounced Peso, one family, who were Roman aristocrats. The New Testament and all the characters in it Jesus, all the Josephs, all the Maas, all the disciples, apostles, Paul and John the Baptist are all fictional. 
The Pisos created the story and the characters, they tied the story into a specific time and place in history, and they connected it with some peripheral actual people, such as the Herods, Gamaliel, the Roman procurators, etc. But Jesus and everyone involved with him were created, that is, fictional, characters. In the middle of the first century of the present era, Rome's aristocracy felt itself confronted with a growing problem. The Jewish religion was continuing to grow in numbers, adding ever more proselytes. Jews numbered more than 8 million, and were 10% of the population of the empire and 20% of that portion living east of Rome. Two approximately half or more of the Jews lived outside Palestine, of which many were descended from proselytes, male and female. Three however, Judaism's ethics and morality were incompatible with the hallowed Roman institution of slavery on which the aristocracy fed, lived, and ruled. They feared that Judaism would become the chief religion of the empire. The Roman author, Aeneas Seneca, tutor and confidant of Emperor Nero, suggested in a letter to his friend Lucilius, a pseudonym of Lucius Piso, that lighting candles on Sabbaths prohibited. For Seneca is later quoted by St. Augustine in his City of God 5, although the quotation does not exist in Seneca's extant writings, as charging that, the, Sabbath, customs of that most accursed nation have gained such strength that they have been now received in all lands, the conquered have given laws to the conqueror. The family headed by Seneca's friend, Lucius Piso, was confronted with an allied problem more personal to it. They were the Calpurnius Pisos, who were descended from statesmen and consuls, and from great poets and historians as well. Gaius Lucius Calpurnius Piso, the leader of the family, had married Aria the Younger, from her grandfather's name, Aristobulus. This made Lucius Piso's wife the great-granddaughter of Herod the Great. Repeatedly, religious-minded Judean zealots were staging insurrections against the Herodian rulers of Judea who were Piso's wife's relations. Piso wished to strengthen his wife's family's control of the Judeans. The Pisos searched for a solution to the two problems. They found it in the Jewish holy books, which were the foundation both for the rapid spread of the religion and for the zealots' refusal to be governed by Rome's puppets. The Pisos mocked, but marveled at, the Jewish belief in their holy books. Therefore, they felt a new Jewish book would be the ideal method to pacify the Judaeans and strengthen their in-laws' control of the country. About the year, 60 AD, Lucius Calpurnius Piso composed Ur Marcus, the first version of the Gospel of Mark, which no longer exists. He was encouraged by his friend Seneca Fiva and assisted by his wife's kinsman, young Persius the poet. Nero's mistress, later his wife, Papia was pro-Jewish, and Nero opposed the plan. The result was the Pisonian conspiracy to assassinate Nero, detailed in the historian Tacitus. But this attempt failed when he aborted the plot. Instead, Nero had Piso and Seneca and their fellow conspirators executed by forcing them to commit suicide. He exiled Piso's young son Arias, spelled Arius Herin, who appears in Tacitus under several names including Antonius Natalis VI Nero sent young Piso to Syria as governor. That post also gave him command of the legions controlling Judea. His own history records his service in Judea in the year 65 under the name of Jesius Florus, and in 66 with the pseudonym Cestius Gallus.